Hey everybody. So today we're going to talk some about uh, transit Pluto, transiting some natal planets. Because <laughs> um, I know last week I did some videos about transit Pluto conjunct natal planets. Um, the squares are also important too. Well, all Pluto transits are important. If you fuck with Pluto, I fuck with Pluto. <laughs> Pluto fucks with me. So, <laughs> but um, the square is what we're going to be talking about today. And um, so let's talk a little bit about Pluto. Some more. Here's the card for it. Um, Pluto. Okay, so Pluto is power. Pluto is uh, Pluto's what? Pluto is a what? Something that what needs to be expressed. Planets are the what, signs are the how, and uh, houses are what areas of life, where or what areas of life. So Pluto is a what? So powers need to be expressed. Um, intensity. Um, transformation, metamorphosis, death and rebirth, um, obsessions and compulsions, <laughs> and or compulsions, um, letting things go. Hol Pluto knows, Pluto does know that it needs to let things go. At the same time though, Pluto holds on very tightly to things. So, <laughs> um, that can make it difficult too. Um, destruction. Pluto does destroy things. Um, it does rebuild though. It does do this, but it does destroy. So the square as the square aspect, it's on the card we have tension, challenge, and frustration. That is what a, a square aspect kind of brings out. Struggle is another one that I would um, I would throw in as well. So let's say you have, and again, this would depend on your whole chart, right? You'd wanna you wanna take the whole chart into account to know for sure exactly how this plays out for you. But generally speaking, um, when you have transit Pluto squaring your natal sun. You're looking at, you're looking at a time, this feels like this could be like a time of identity struggles or, or, or time for, uh, for getting into power struggles with your, with concepts of your identity, with your, with yourself, with your vitality, with the way that you, you know, yeah all of those kinds of things um it's not an it's not generally an easy time for for people um not at all <laughs> um but yeah definitely the power struggle thing the power struggle thing um this could be a time where you feel like other people have power over you or something else has has some sort of power over you um of course this is all to probably <clears throat> to destroy how you to destroy how you think about power in the first place to build it back up in, in a better way same thing with your identity but it's not comfortable while it's going on um when you've got transit pluto squaring your natal sun You'll want to also look at what house cusp Leo falls on in your chart because that house will also be impacted by this by this transit, as will the house that the natal sun falls in <clears throat> and the house that transit Pluto is hovering around. These areas of life will be impacted. Um, now, oh, also, when I'm looking at transits, and, and you can do transits however you want, but for reference, the way that I do them <clears throat> is I look at a five degree applying and separating orb. Now with Pluto, I do know that some people will move it in, bring it in a little bit since Pluto does move so slow. 
Some people might bring it in to say three degrees applying or separating. If you want to do that, that's fine because the 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 most the the time that you're gonna that transit sun or not the transit sun the time that transit Pluto is going to be impacting the natal sun the most is when it's closer to being exact. But I I keep it out to five degrees still, just because you're gonna feel, right, with transits, you, you start feeling the impacts earlier than when you start feeling the actual intensity of the of the transit. You start feeling the, the ripples earlier. So I, that is why I, I pull it out to five degrees applying or separating. Um, but you can do what you want there. <laughs> however you, you know, however you, however you feel called to do that is fine. Um, okay, so let's say you've got transit Pluto <clears throat> squaring your moon, your natal moon. The moon is emotions, it is feelings, it is, it is intuition, it is, there is an intuitiveness to it, it is um, reflecting, it is security and feeling safe and moods in general. Obviously, that goes along with feelings and and emotions. So when you've got <clears throat> when you've got transit Pluto squaring your natal moon, this might be a time where you <laughs> there might be some 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 challenge <laughs> or some tension with with your emotions. Um, you might not really know what to do with your emotions all of the time or yeah it, it, they might be a little bit more all over the place <clears throat> this would obviously depend on the whole chart as to how this actually ends up playing out for you but there is usually some kind of struggle with emotions um they are usually intensified and it's usually not comfortable super comfortable um the way that or what needs to be expressed right your emotions are what needs to be expressed so and then the how is is the sign that the moon falls in so all of this is kind of being transformed or destroyed even to be rebuilt but it's not usually something the person feels like they want to lean into because it is square because there is tension there the more you fight it, with Pluto transit, same thing with Saturn transits, the more you fight it, the harder it is. Do keep that in mind. Um, the harder it usually is. Now I've also seen, and I know I mentioned this in the conjunction video, I've also, see, also seen people <clears throat> get worried when transit Pluto is squaring like their sun or their moon. Things like a parent dying, what have you. Um, get tends to get brought up like am I gonna have somebody die something like that it's possible but again like with the conjunction I would not automatic my mind would not automatically go there unless there were like a whole bunch of other things going on in the chart transit wise <laughs> that kind of backs that up or if I didn't already know that the person's mother or father you know mother or father or whatever was um was sick in real life you know I wouldn't take it off the table, but I, but, but certainly don't be afraid of that. Don't be scared of that. Don't think that's automatically going to happen. Um, definitely, definitely don't automatically go that way is, is my point. <clears throat> okay. So transit Pluto or transit Pluto squaring needle, needle Mercury. Um, this can be like a, a time where your mind feels kind of fucked with um like power struggles in the mind <laughs> um it's not super comfortable there is usually it's 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 to transform the way you think the way you perceive or what you perceive rather what you perceive what you think um how you how you or what you communicate but there are power struggles involved because we are dealing with Pluto here 
So again, this isn't, this can kind of feel like a, like a mind fuck. Um, definitely want to look at the house cusps that Gemini and Virgo are on in your chart because they will, those areas of life will also be impacted as well, um, where the house that natal Mercury is in, in your chart and whatever house transit Pluto is hovering around. All of those houses will be impacted by this. Um, yeah, but it, it, there is kind of a mind fuckery feeling about this particular, uh, and, and, and the more you fight what needs to be re destroyed and rebuilt with what you think, what you perceive, what you communicate, the harder, the, the more this feels like a mind fuck. Um, okay, so then we've got Natal Venus. <clears throat> Let's say you have Transit Pluto square Natal Venus. So this is probably a time where some, say, what you value, what you love, those sorts of things. This can be a time where there are things that need to be released and let go of, again, destroyed and rebuilt. Um, that can be really hard because Venus is also, you know, Venus also deals with, you know, peacefulness and harmony <laughs> and to have something like Pluto that's very intense, very powerful, squaring that can really throw the peace and harmony that Venus what you know what Venus expresses off off balance <laughs> it, it can really throw people for a loop so um and also Venus does Venus does have a correlation with relationships it can be a difficult time in if you if you are in a relationship and you have transit Pluto squaring needle Venus it, it can it doesn't have to be but it can be a difficult time for relationships um but it, it doesn't necessarily have to deal, doesn't have to go relationship wise. It doesn't have to mean that in your chart, but it can. Um, but it's usually, you know, because it's a square, it's, it's a, there is trans, there is a transformation here happening, but it's not usually one that the person is super, super comfortable with or even wants at the time. <laughs> um, so yeah, but those kind of themes are going on usually and then the last one we're going to talk about for now is um mars let's say you've got natal mars and it is being squared by transit pluto um so this one feels like <clears throat> this one feels like it could be really fucking annoying um <laughs> you know mars is action mars is drive mars these are what Mars wants to express. Independence, um, even anger and aggression, um, libido, even, you know, <laughs> um, all of these things. And then you, if, when you have trans, when you've got transit Pluto squaring needle Mars, what's needing to be expressed by Mars is being pulled out to do this differently. Now, Mars is the lower octave of, of Pluto. Pluto is the higher octave of Mars. So you essentially have these energies that are, sim that are similar because they are higher and lower octaves of one another. But Mars is more like the, um, the human end of things and, and Pluto is more the spiritual end of things, if that makes sense. That's kind of how I think about it in my mind. So, when you've got a Pluto, when you've got Pluto squaring Mars, you've got the the human end of, of things, of like drive and passion and, and and even power is being is at is is at odds with the spiritual end of things. And Pluto transit Pluto is when you've got transit Pluto squaring Mars, it is trying to make those the human end more spiritual but Mars doesn't so much deal in that so it can be difficult 
Um, that's why it feels really fucking frustrating. But again, this one is, this is definitely one that I would not fight. Because <laughs> it does feel like transit, transit Pluto squaring Mars would be one that Mars would want to try to fight. Fight, fight, fight. I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure it, it does. But it needs to lean into this, to the more spiritual, to the higher octave of itself, to Pluto, and that would make it easier. Exactly how that happens depends on the whole chart, but that would be my advice for something like that, for, for transit Pluto squaring Natal Mars. Um, I didn't mention this in all of them, but definitely you want to look at the house cusps in the chart like with, with Mars, uh, you'd want to look at the house cusps that um, that Aries fall on in the chart and that even Scorpio falls on in the chart if you use traditional and modern rulership. Both of those houses, areas of life, will also be impacted by this transit um, along with the house that Natal Mars falls in and the house that transit Pluto is hovering around. Um, I didn't mention that for a couple of them, <laughs> but, um, but definitely make sure and take the, those house cusps into account because they'll help flush everything up further. I'm going to get going because this one got kind of long. Um, if you want to follow us on Instagram, you can find us at Let's Fuck With Astrology. I am at Saturn Season Astrology on Instagram. Natalie is at Abiturno Astrology on Instagram. If you want to like or subscribe or whatever the fuck people do with videos on YouTube, <laughs> you can uh, find us by searching for Let's Fuck With Astrology in the YouTube search bar. If you're already watching this on YouTube, you can like and subscribe below. <laughs> um, if you do the Reddit thing, come join us on the subreddit, Let's Talk With Astrology. And if you're interested in the star cards, go to letstalkwithastrology.com slash star dash cards. Okay, y'all. I'll see y'all later.